For starters, in order to create a custom environment, you'll need to start with the background. Use either keyword keys to take a screenshot then open the file in your game's directory. You'll find it same there. You need to open the file using a uh, graphic software that's not so basic. Microsoft Paint definitely won't help you out. So you can see I'm previewing the file in the game's directory, the JPEG file. I actually used Clip Studio Paint in this video. It's actually my favorite art software and, and I prefer it more rather than Photoshop in most cases. It's actually good for Japanese, uh, creating Japanese manga. I recommend using a creative pen tablet or a pen display and a pressure sensitive pen or stylus to create advanced looking graphics. It's actually much way easier than using a mouse. So you need to start with a new layer which is where you work on the environment separately from the screenshot and will be just used as guide. So I'm using the selection tool to fill it out and create the space for on where I'll, uh, I'll work on the environment itself. I could use the color black but I actually prefer uh, white because it's actually the best color to start with. I locked the pixels in that layer. I created a new layer with a clipping mask. That's one for the background and the other one for the background key. I placed the screenshot layer on top and lowering its opacity so I can simply see through and use it as a guide to draw the background key which I'm going to create. So I'm simply just using basic tools at this point. Uh, drawing a circle, a line, I just have to start with the mobile. Yeah, I made a mistake here. There you go, that looks good. And now, with the line. There you go, I'm drawing a straight line. I don't need to draw this man at all. The light tool is actually much way easier. Common sense. And this may take some time to draw the curve, so I'm gonna speed this video up. At this point I'm drawing the colors of the background. You can see it doesn't touch the background key at all because it's separate. Both the layer of the background and the background key are separate from each other. So I'm just adding the dark areas and the bright areas. So and there we go. So we're almost done here. Just make sure that background file is the only thing that's visible, the background and the key are the only things that should be visible once you save it. So once we're saving it here, this, this is the important part, you need to actually save it in Tarja or DJ file format because that's the only format that the game can read. I'll just name this as background blitz and there we go, save. Wow, this looks amazing! Be quiet! <coughs> Once you are ready to import your background to the game, you'll need to carefully place it inside your data folder. You have to store it in your sources, then at this point you can create a folder where you can place all your custom files in order to avoid mixing it with the game's original files. I named the file as Customize Capitalized. Paste your file there. Next, you need to get to the game to create your environment file, go through the level properties, go to that new button, name the environment's file, click save, then click on create folder, and there you can. You just simply need to modify the settings from layers, choose on background image, back to the folder we created, and you can see the custom background that you created. So, of course, it's obviously this big. So, select the file, hit F6 or F7 on your keyboard to test your environment. Ready. 
you just successfully imported a custom background image to your game, you'll find your environments visible listed among the other environments. Yay! Hello! 